Good night. Good evening. This is Brother Gomez here um, with Sons of the Living God Ministry. We're here live at Cambria Baptist Church um, in Newcastle, Wyoming. God bless you all for coming and tuning in tonight. Um, as always, we're going to begin with prayer. Amen. I believe that God is bringing us just like he brought us into a new year and the seasons are changing. That he's bringing his people into a new season of refreshing, a season of equipping, a season of preparing for what's to come. A season for declaring what, who has come and in whose name we come. Amen. We come in the name of Jesus. That's whose name matters here tonight. Amen? Amen. You know, there's something, there's just something about when, when I hear the name of Jesus Christ, it changes me every day. And I go from glory to glory with my Lord. And I see people that way. I see the potential in people. I don't see their, their turmoil. I don't see their struggle as much as I do God's promise in their life. And that's what gives me the inspiration to inspire other people to rise up and be counted amongst the household of faith. Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. It doesn't take forever to come into the calling of God. It just takes being aware and paying attention with the Spirit to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Amen? Let us pray before we go on in, in the service today and the teaching. Father, um, I thank you, Lord, for walking with us, Lord. For being patient with us, Lord, in our walk. For helping us, Lord, when we cannot stand, Lord. You give us strength to stand. When we... When we, like Isaiah, say, oh, God, I have been with men of unclean lips, Lord. Father, you, your angel takes the coal and touches it to, to the mouth of your servant, Lord, and cleanses, cleanses us, Lord, so that your word comes out pure, Father, and holy like you, Father. For you are the Lord, and you are pure and holy, Father. So, Lord, I just thank you for tonight. I thank you for taking us deeper, Lord in the things of your spirit, and in the things of your precious love, Father. We thank you, Lord. We come, Lord, to walk deeper with you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You know, um, I think about the scriptures we're going to go through today, and we're going to be speaking about discernment and spiritual maturity, the the, um, the title of the teaching tonight is A Deeper Walk in Spiritual Maturity. Amen. One of the, the words that is defined and, and um, translated from maturity is perfection. Okay. A lot of people say nobody's perfect. Well, that's not true. The Bible wouldn't say be perfect if um, like, our, like your father in heaven is perfect if you couldn't walk a perfect life with God. So I challenge you to, to say different about the gospel because I can take you right to the scriptures that say it. It's just that a lot of times people perish for the lack of understanding. Okay? Understanding, going deeper than just the surface of the word of God. How many of you know that, that the deep calleth unto the deep? <laughs> Amen? Amen? And so here we see the word perfection. I'm speaking of spiritual maturity. Some people say maturity, <laughs> okay? And so we're going to talk about the perfect will of God for our life and tonight and what it is to, to grow spiritually and to go from just being a, 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 new, a newly born Christian and understanding what it is to live the Christian life as a mature Christian and as we grow together. And then because, see, there's... Parts of the body that sometimes need a little bit more training than the others. You know, your eyes, when, you, when, when you're born as a baby, your eyes open up and you look around and you see everything, but you can't run yet. Okay? So there's other parts of your body that need to mature and, and grow and, and get used to the natural movement of, of your body so that all of a sudden then as a child, not only can you see, but you can see and hear, but you can actually walk out your walk with God. Amen. Amen? And as, a, and as um, a spiritual mentor, Paul spoke to Timothy and he said, uh, uh, he, he spoke of Timothy as his, as his dear and his beloved son whom he 
adopted through the gospel. Amen. The Bible says, though you may have 10,000 instructors in Christ, not you, you have not many fathers. Now, we don't, we don't, not, not that you call a person father, because we only have one father in heaven, but there are people who have the spirit of the father to nurture their children to greatness. Through obedience, through sacrificial living, to understanding what the, the greatness that there comes with serving the Lord. Amen? And I don't just want to be another teacher. Because there's only one teacher, really, and that's the Holy Spirit. The Bible says don't even call a man a teacher. Don't even call him a rabbi. Amen. Except for there is only one teacher. Amen. And so um, I, I express this all the time that, you know, um, if the Holy Ghost doesn't, doesn't minister to me on how to, how to administer the word of God, I can, I can fill you with a lot of head knowledge, but not a lot of heart knowledge. Amen. I want your heart to be completely submissive to the word of God. So that the language that comes from your heart is pure and holy, sanctified in Christ. Amen? So in 2 Peter chapter 1, we're going to begin from verse 1 through 11. And it begins with this. It says, Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. So he's saying, he's speaking to the household of faith. He's not speaking to the non-believers here. He's speaking to those that have, that have obtained like precious faith. Amen? Faith is precious. It is very valuable. It is a treasure amongst God's children. To have faith in the word of God. And, you know, um, brother... Um, Brother Joe Shoecraft is here with us today, and I appreciate you, brother, because um, the other day in our home group and at our house church, um, on our Monday night group, he shared some poetic and um, prophetic words um, from the from the scriptures, and it really it was really profound, and it was, and, and you could see the the commitment that he put into putting it together. It was very creative, and it was it was very biblical. It was very sound. And it really blessed us, and I appreciate you for that, brother. I, I, I commend that. that. That was awesome. I was really blessed by that. Everybody there, I could say there's a couple of them that are here tonight that were there that uh, could say they were blessed by that. <laughs> Amen. And, um, and so we had spoken about um, on Wednesday about let nobody forsake your youth. Amen. So sometimes people think because they're a little younger or they're a younger Christian that, you know, they can't be used of God the way God wants them to be. But if, if you'll dig in and allow God to cultivate the seed of his word within our hearts, then you're going to find out that God is not a respecter of persons. Amen. Amen. He, he, if you apply God's principles and rules to your life, then the blessing of God will be upon them. Amen. And no matter what age, no matter what culture you're from or whatever, if you receive the word of God and, and that like precious faith that it's speaking of here with Peter, the apostle of God, then you're going to be standing before God in the same condition as Peter was standing before God after the resurrection. Amen. This book was written after Jesus rose from the dead. Okay. First book, of, second book of Peter, chapter one. So here it goes on and says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. There's a lot said in that sentence there because it says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So as we begin to grow in our relationship with God and Jesus and in the knowledge of them and in the way that they operate within us through the Holy Spirit and through the power of the word, then grace and peace begin to multiply in our lives. That's all I can tell when you're walking with the Lord, is how gracious you are, how appreciative you are of the salvation, and how peaceful you are. Amen? That's true. It's very true. Very true. Yeah, you know, and, and when you see somebody who loves Jesus, you, after you talk with them a little bit, they can't help but tell you about 
the grace and the mercy and the peace of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I always tell people, you know, the Bible says that the heart, that, that the mouth speaks from the abundance of the heart. I can tell where you are spiritually by the words that come out of your mouth. That's one of the keys of discernment. Amen. Discernment is for the well learned. So we got to study him. we got to ask God. And you know what? What's awesome is that God's wisdom, he comes and he makes it very clear to us so that we can understand how the Bible is literally applicable and tangible for us to walk in the spirit of truth. Amen? And so here it says that your peace be multiplied in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord in verse 3. It says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Virtue is the integrity of the Holy Spirit, the integrity of the believer, the purity of the heart that walks and lives by the conviction of the Holy Ghost. See, the only reason that I'm here sharing this word is because I'm convicted if I don't. Woe, woe be unto me if I preach not the gospel of Jesus Christ to, who, to which I am called. Amen? You know, it's in, it's in, these, um, it's in these, these moments that God takes us through the world and we begin to share the gospel with people In every occasion that we get to, even if it's just in a few words, it shows the integrity and the fervency of our relationship with God in the quiet place because it is shown outwardly to others. Because it's our living home. That's right, it is. It's our living home. It's, it's a testimony of our Lord and Savior. Today we were just having um, a lunch, and, and before we left, the Lord said, you better go talk to those people and those people and tell them God bless you before you leave. And I did, and I did it very discreetly, but I did it um, in obedience to God. And the response that I got from those those people was very gracious and very kind. And it was it was just in the middle of their meal. I'm sorry I don't mean to interrupt you, but I just wanted to say God bless you and your family, you know. And the brother turned around and goes, "Hey, God bless you," and took my hand and held my hand, like, "Hey, man, thank you." People respond to love. Yes, they respond to love, you know, they respond to when you, when, you know, when the Lord tells you to do something, don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and do it. That's, that's part of, that's part of being bold about your faith, but yet being humble and being discreet in the way that you live your life before the Lord. And so these are examples, that's one of many examples of how we can, we can allow the grace and the, and, and, and the mercy of God in our life to, to be outwardly shared with other people, um, strangers, with, you know, <laughs> just anybody at any moment that the Holy Spirit leads you to do it. Just do it. It's okay. Just do it. Some people might laugh you to scorn. They did it to Jesus. <laughs> and some people might just respond to you very well, you know. And so, um, and, you know, the Lord always watches over us. He's always paying attention to what we're doing, amen? Helping us through the hard times and blessing us, you know, in the midst of all things. And so here it goes on and it says, him who called us by glory and virtue, verse four says, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, <clears throat> amen? So, to be partakers of the divine nature, it says, having, not going, but having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Okay? This is speaking about believers that have applied the word of God, have applied the divine nature of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and we've escaped the snare of the enemy. And we're no longer tossed to and fro, but we're led of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God helps us to be a blessing amongst the people. Amen? And so here in, 
in five, it goes on and says, but also for this very reason, reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Amen? So here's a, a formula that's starting to take place. First, diligence, and then adding to your faith virtue, and then to that knowledge, and to knowledge self-control. So when you begin to know God more, you, you're more self-controlled. You're not just acting out all the time. You're not just, you know, freaking out about everything that happens in your life. Or about things you have no control over. But you're trusting God. And you're saying, oh God. You got to intervene, oh God. <laughs> you got to help me, oh God. <laughs> to help the others, oh God. Because without you I can do nothing, oh God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Comes from, Amen. Yep. <laughs> That's where our help totally comes from. Fine. You know. Totally What's that song? Um, I lift my eyes unto the Lord. <laughs> Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. You know, God, God, God wants us to look up. There's a part of the scripture that says, do not have your focus on these things, Don. Mm -hmm. For those are temporal things. Mm -hmm. They're fleeting things. They're not going to last forever. But, but look up into eternal things that endure forever. Amen. And so, when you look up and your spiritual eyes are open, you see the Word of God. You see Jesus Christ very clearly. And he begins to allow his Word to flow like a mighty river from his heart into yours. And the Word of God begins to wash away all the cobwebs, so to say, all the dross that, seem, that seems to overshadow you. And he, and he begins to overshadow you with his Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, just like Mary, when she was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, she, something comes alive inside of her. Uh, Christ was conceived within her. And I'm telling you spiritually, as the body of Christ, that when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, that there's, there's an activation of, of the seed of God that is planted in you, the Word of God that is planted in us as the beloved of God. And all of a sudden, there's a new life growing inside of you. Just the way Mary, when it happened to her, the Holy Ghost filled her. When she went to see Elizabeth, John the Baptist jumped in Elizabeth's womb, and, she, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So when the Word of God is truly alive within you, it begins to stir the gift of the Holy Spirit within you. It begins to, to stir the goodness of God within His Spirit and within His Word. And before you know it, it comes forth from within you, just as a child is born. You go through the birthing pains. Birthing pains are good. Why? Because that means that new life is about to happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is how the word of God is. It changes us from inside. And then once that life comes like a child, it changes your whole life outside. Amen. You have more love. You have more responsibility. You start to put away foolish things and think about being responsible and doing, doing good things, doing godly things, not for just yourself because it's not just about you anymore. Now you have this child to take care of that is completely dependent upon you. Whew, glory to God. Such is the word of God. One plants, one sows. Another waters, but God brings the increase in due season. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And so here it says, add to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, kindness, love. So as we grow, we grow in the love of God. Okay. And you know, um, love can can be challenging at times because we have to deal with self. And get self out of the way. And allow for God to, through the Holy Spirit, to take over. Amen. He'll take over. 
All we have to do is surrender to it. And it doesn't got to look a certain way. It don't got to be the traditions of our Father that have caused the Word of God to be of none effect in the house of God. It has to be the, the, the true living Word, not a religion. You're looking at in Christ as the body, you look, look in the mirror, you're going to see the Word made flesh. Amen. The Word come into the earthen vessel, the vessels of honor. And individually and corporately come together in Christ to be one people, one body with many members upholding the head and taking instruction only from the head. See, the body don't tell the head what to do. The head tells the body what to do. Amen. 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 If we get it mixed up, then guess what? We're following and we're serving ourselves or we're serving a man. See, one said, um, we're going to get into the scripture here where they said, oh, some of you are carnal minded because some of you are still saying I'm of Apollos and I'm of of Paul, and, and he's like, oh no, uh-uh, there's only one who died for you, there's only one creator, amen, so we need to understand this, we're going to go into eight, and it says, for if these things are in you, speaking of diligence, virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, and brotherly kindness leading to love, it says, for if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So these things all bring you into knowing or into an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, a very, very pure and pure and holy relationship with Jesus Christ, and you'll begin to be fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. See, some people think that, that, that um, I, I've heard some people say, well, the fruit is, you know, if you've got a lot of followers or if you've got a lot of people sitting in the pews or you've got a whole lot of fancy things going on. No, this is talking about in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is talking about the fruit of the Spirit that causes you to walk with God in a way that is acceptable and pleasing to the Father. Amen? Because if all I can teach you is how to be religious, well, you could go get that anywhere. Okay, but I need to teach that you are to relate to Jesus Christ, you to relate to the Father through Jesus Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Because if you don't, you can you can get lost in 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 a theology or you can get lost in a in a program that that, that doesn't make allowance for what God wants to do. Sounds good. It's fun for a season. But if it doesn't develop your character, then it can bring the fowler. See, the word sin means to miss the mark. And the word mark there is translated character. So when you fall away from the character of the Holy Spirit, then you fall into sin, you fall into darkness, and you fall into a death mentality. For the wages of sin are death. Like the parable of the seed. Yeah. If they did not grow, then they would be saved. There you go. It's one or the other. Right. And if and if the thorns come up and choke it out, then you need to allow the word of God to go into the good soil of your heart. First of all, you need to not harden your heart. You gotta let that, that seed go into your heart and start to cultivate. And cultivate and cultivate and cultivate. Just like a child in the womb. It takes a time for the child to develop. And then all of a sudden there comes a time where the child is born. And during the whole time the mother is nurturing that. See, and we as the church need to nurture the seed of God. Not take and use it for self-gain or use it for self-glorification. But we need to use it to the glory of God to reproduce after his likeness. Hallelujah. That's what that child is born in. It is in the likeness of God. Looking for the heart of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to understand who we are. We are the beloved. We are the bride of Christ. And we carry the seed of God. We're to birth Christ in the nation of his people. When people started freaking out about the COVID and about the government, a lot of people were saying, we've got to pray for our nation. We've got to pray for our nation. And the Lord told me, he says, no, you got to pray for my nation, for my people to rise up, Amen. not for just another government to rise up, not for just America to be good, but for the, the beloved of the Lord to rise up in the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit that was given to them to endure and to remain faithful unto the end that they might be saved. 
See, Jesus was praying for Jerusalem, who slayed the prophets between the threshold and the altar. Because they needed to be saved. There's a lot of people sitting in pews that are not saved. And tickling preacher, tickling ear preachers like to keep them that way because then they never get out from under their control. Ouch. Never get away from the guilt. Yeah. Give me another dollar and I'll make it feel better. Oh boy. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. Hey, Jackie Kaufman, God bless you. Good to see you. Tracy Deerfield, brother, God bless you. I love you. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, and so we go on and we see here, um, it says, if these things abound in you, it goes on to say that you will not be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says, for he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. We forget what Jesus did at the cross sometimes as believers because we get distracted and we all of a sudden we start we start stumbling in the dark because we're blinded to the truth in the fact of the matter that Jesus died for our sins that we might become the righteousness of God. And if you get people teaching you any less than that, then guess what you're going to learn? Less than that. The Bible speaks of a place where they were talking about the Sanhedrin and other people who would not let people enter into the holy place for they themselves do not even enter in. How are they going to let you in to a place they can't even lead you into themselves? Because they've denied it themselves. We need to wake up to the reality that God loves us and God called us and anointed us and appointed us to a service. And the service is to be holy, for he is holy. To call upon the name of the Lord when you're, when you're in trouble. You know, I, you know, to take all things to God in prayer. A lot of times we want to run over, Mama, Mama, Daddy, Daddy, oh, this is a broken brother. Well, the first thing you're supposed to do is pray. And then you can go and get other people praying with you and helping you, and that's good. That's not a bad thing. But, but see, God wants to be first in our life, is the point that I'm making. He wants you to come to him. He wants you to come to, to, to obtain mercy and grace. Boldly before the throne to obtain it. Amen? And so it says here, amen, that for he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Amen. So whenever I've stumbled, it's because I wasn't doing these things. But as I begin to do these things... I begin not to stumble because I'm no longer blind and walking in the dark and tripping over every stump, every stumbling block that people set before me, including myself. But when you're in the light, like if you're running through the forest and it's dark, oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> but if you're running through the forest and, and, and it's daylight and you know where the trail's at, well, that's, you know, you're going to have a little better experience there. <laughs> Amen. Same thing spiritually. Amen. We as God's people need to walk and be in the light as he is in the light. Amen. And so it says that you will never stumble. It says for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now Jesus prayed in the Father's pray, prayer that the kingdom of God would be here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So you can walk in kingdom principle right here on the earth and have no stumbling in you. See, a lot of people wait to arrive in the sweet by and by over there somewhere in the sky to walk as Christ to walk the earth, but that's not biblical. The Bible says we could do it here. Amen. And so 1 Peter 2, chapter 2, 4 through 9. It says, come into him as to a living stone rejected indeed by men, but chosen to God and precious. 
You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which is the builders, which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and the stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Amen. God bless you, Melissa. God bless you. Good to see you tuning in. Um, so here, he's talking about when Jesus had come and the Sanhedrin rejected him. They ended up crucifying him. His people who were chosen by God for him to go and to leave, they, they rejected him. And he became a stumbling block to them. And it says that they stumbled, being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. See, there was appointed by God for Jesus to come and die for the sinner, that the sinner would become a saint, okay? But because they rejected the testimony of Jesus Christ and did not see him as the Lord and Savior and the Messiah and crucified him, they rejected the chief cornerstone of the church. I spoke the other day about the chief cornerstone. That is in the foundation and it is the point from which the, the, the builders go and get the level and the plumb and the square and everything of the building. And if the chief cornerstone is not established right in the foundation of a building, the building will not be level and the building will not stand. And that's why Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone because he's the foundation. The foundation of our faith is in Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross. And, that, and, and unless, unless you build upon that foundation... Your house will fall. And that's what happened here with the Sanhedrin in the scripture. They rejected him. They did not allow him to be the undergirding of their faith. That's why when he was crucified, the temple split. The one that was made by the hands of men split. <laughs> Amen. And the veil was torn and so that now we have access through the blood of Christ into the most holy place to obtain grace and mercy and wisdom and counsel and leading and comfort and authority and humility and all the things that are precious to God. Amen? Amen. And so it says in 9, 1 Peter 2, chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a holy people his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I want to take and I want to express a little bit, you know, like I said a little bit ago about running through the forest in the nighttime as opposed to in the daytime. Okay, he's called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. It's marvelous when you start to see spiritually, your spiritual eyes are open and you start to see the truth that sets you free from the law of sin and death. For the law of the letter is death. But the law of the spirit in Christ Jesus sets us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. So there is a righteous law. There's man's legalism and there's God's liberty, law of liberty. It's still a law. It's still a commandment. It's still to be obeyed, and it works. You know, I've got some friends here locally that maybe they don't, um, they don't fit in with what other people say is the cloth of the righteous. But you know what? Those people have loved me as much as people have in the church. They have. They've been my friends. They've been people that I can relate to on a normal basis without them dissecting every little move I make, you know? <laughs> and, and I love those people. And they love me too. I can go to their house and say, hey, brother, what's going on? No matter what they're doing, they're, they'll, they'll pull up a chair and go, brother, sit down, man. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? And I'm like, hey, brother, man, how you doing, man? I missed it. You know what's going on, man? What's happening? See, Jesus was that way. 
the religious people, the Sanhedrin, they didn't like when Jesus sat with the tax collectors and the sinners. And Jesus said, hey, I came for the sick. I didn't come for those who didn't need a physician. In a sense, he was telling them, dude, you guys are the sick ones. Because you won't even sit with these people saying that you, you are the children of God and God who is love, but yet you can't love enough um, somebody that don't fit into the same cloth as you to go sit at that table with them and lead them to the Lord. Hypocrites. Ouch. It's important that we reach out to people that need healing, that need to know how much God loves them, that need to know that, hey, there is a better life in Jesus. Amen. Jimmy, would you turn the heat up just a little bit, please? Thank you, love. So we're going to continue here. And um, in 1 John, the first book of John, chapter 2, 1 through 6. And it begins like this. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. Okay? Right prior to that, he was just talking about that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay? And he who says he has no sin is a liar and the truth is not in him. Okay? But he's telling us these things to warn us against sinning. He said, and if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father. We have one that speaks on our behalf to the Father. Why? Because, because we're, we're growing. Amen? <laughs> Amen. And um, so here it says, if anybody, not that you have to, but if you choose to, we turn back to the Lord and we ask him. And we realize that the Bible says that he's interceding for us to the Father all the time. So we come into oneness with that prayer as the body of Christ and we submit ourselves to the Lord again and we surrender and we say, Lord, forgive me, Lord, help me that I stumble not, Father. Remind me of the, of the ancient paths of your holiness, Father. And bring forth the fruit of your kingdom, your spirit. Amen. So here it says that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Isn't that neat? <laughs> our, our lawyer, so to say, before the judge is Jesus, and he's righteous. And him and the Father are one because he said it really clear. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. For me and the Father are one. Amen? <laughs> That's a pretty good setup. <laughs> yeah, for me, I mean, hey, I'm telling you, man. Praise God, man. The, the Father, my, my Father is the judge, and my Lord and Savior, my precious Lord Jesus is the advocate. Who I better get in order with those guys. I better come into the court singing his praise. Amen. <laughs> you know, and the thanksgiving in my heart and, and, and the righteous blood of Jesus Christ just cleansing me and causing me to sing of the great works of the Father, to speak of the finished work of Messiah at the cross. Yes. Not of the things that I have come but come and done, but the things that he has done on behalf of his people, on behalf of his beloved, to the glory of God. Not to make another program to distract you from the holiness of God. But to, but to set the word of God within your heart so that it becomes a lamp unto your feet. So that your path is always lighted. And there will be no stumbling in you. Because the old person has died. Behold, Jesus said, I make all things new. Amen? And so here... It says that we have Jesus Christ as our advocate, the righteous, and he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Mm. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. 
Wow. Wow. That's a big assignment. That is, well, see, it's a big assignment. But you see, we have a great teacher. We have the teacher of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was sent. Jesus, see, Jesus, when he rose, he said, he said, don't worry, I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost. And he's going to bring into remembrance all that I ever spoke to you. <laughs> we have a great teacher. The greatest teacher. He's the third part of the Godhead. The Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so it says that we're to walk as Christ so walked the earth. That is amazing. Because it's not by our righteousness. It's by his righteousness. We become. It's not in the doing. It's in the becoming. The righteousness of God. It's when you become something, you put on a new identity. The old person has died. And lo and behold, the child of God is alive and well. And he's speaking in the temple. And all of the wise men were amazed at Jesus. He was just a child. And the way he spoke. And the things that he knew. And the things that he revealed. And the revelation of understanding of the scriptures just amazed the Bible scholars because he spoke with such confidence of the Holy Spirit, yet was humble and just a child. Because Jesus said it, unless you become like one of these, a child, a little child, you shall in no means ever see the kingdom of God. You will never understand it. Let me say it that way. You will never understand it because you're the darkening of your understanding but when the true light that shines comes, he comes and he reveals all things that were hidden in darkness. And he pulls out all the treasures of darkness into the light. And lays them before the Father and says, Lord, here's the treasures. Let me tell you who the hidden treasures of darkness are. Us. When he pulls us out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are the hidden treasures of darkness within the heart and the hands of our Father. And no, therefore no man can pluck me out of the hand of my God. Nobody can pluck me out of the hand of my God. Yeah. And in, in where he is, there is no darkness. There is no darkness in it. Amen. Hallelujah. And so... We're going to go to 1 John chapter 2, verse 9 through 10, and it says, He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. But he who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. Hallelujah. Again, it says there is no cause for stumbling in him. If you walk in the light, you love your brother. See, they were telling Jesus one time, he was surrounded by all the people, and they were telling him, Hey, Lord, um... You know, um, your mother and your brother and your sisters, they want to see you. And he says, who? And he looks at his disciples and he says, who is my mother, my brother, and my sister? Those who hear the word of my father and obey it. He said, this is my mother, my brother, and my sister. So he was speaking of a people that were set apart into the work of God. We need to stop pulling each other apart because we don't um, come into the unity of the faith sometime because we've got a little doctrinal difference or a little, little attitude and lack of gratitude. We need to start loving our brothers that are, that, are, that, are, that are struggling. We need to start lifting up the name of Jesus above our own agenda. And we need to stop making people into merchandise in the church. We need to understand that they are the hidden treasures of darkness to be brought into the marvelous light that only comes from Jesus and to be presented before him pure and holy without spot or blemish as the beloved of the Lord. Amen. Joseph Carpenter, God bless you, brother. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, so here we're going to go in the last scripture that I want to share is going to be out of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. It says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? 
Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. See, Paul didn't mix words. He said, it's not because of the greatness of, of me, but it's because of the one who sent me to preach to you so that you would believe in him and you would belong to him and your commitment would be to him. See, because they knew that some of those people were going to continue their faith walk after they died. So they had to have their focus on Jesus. We got to take our eyes off the man that was created in God's image and, 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 is, and is bringing the word and start putting our eyes on the creator of all humanity. We got to start following Jesus more fervently and not make it a program that Apollos or the Apostle Paul or Brother Martin or whoever else, you know, um, came to do, but you know, my, my job is to lead you to him. My job is to follow him and say, if you see me following him right, follow the same example, but don't follow me. Follow me as I follow him because I'm actually following him. He's leading. I'm not leading. The Holy Ghost is leading. God the Father is, is, is the one that we want access to through God the Son by being led through God the Holy Spirit. We need to understand that. We need to love one another. It says, Paul said in verse 6, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Amen? He gave the more abundant life. It says, so then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome that the increase and the abundant life that we are given through the gospel of Jesus Christ and through the leading of the Holy Spirit comes directly from God Almighty. It comes from the heart of God flowing like a mighty rushing river. And it comes and it begins to wash us so clean that all of a sudden we start realizing, whoa. People are seeing someone greater than me. And they're seeing it. But see, the Bible says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So I want to foreshow what Christ in me, the hope of glory. I want the Holy Ghost to minister to you. I don't want Martin to teach you. I want him to teach you through me. Because he's the only teacher who knows everything you need to know. And the things that are too great for you, the Bible says don't. Don't concentrate on those things. See, we can go down rabbit holes sometimes trying to figure out things that we have, don't really know about. We speculate. We, 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 we try to revelate. We try to, you know, something late. Someone's late. <laughs> and it sure isn't Jesus. Amen. It isn't the Holy Ghost. And, and you know, the Lord... Uh, the, the, the Lord has a, an amazing way of helping us both individually and corporately to follow the way of holiness. If you're not teaching holiness, you're teaching lukewarmness. Amen. And you will be spit out of the mouth of God. I'm sorry, but you take that to, to the holy bank and Jesus will cast that check for you every day. Like it or not. If I'm only teaching you to wallow in your sin, then you're like a dog returning to your vomit, and that's not healthy. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to answer to God for that. I'm going to answer to God and say, yeah, God, they, they tried to crucify me for saying what you said to say. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Here's the babies. Hey, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Amen. You ever see that little... Show where they go, oh, I'm the baby. God loves the baby. You know? <laughs> you know, God loves his children. God loves his people. He's not trying to rule you with an iron hand. He is, he is holding you with his right hand. The righteousness of the power of God. And he loves you. He loves you so much. 
He wants you to know and learn how to love yourself and to love others because when you see yourself through the eyes of Christ and through the blood of Christ and through the heart of the Father and through the mind of Christ, you will literally become a different person. And you will go from glory to 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 the in the eternal glory that never fades away. What a testimony. We serve a good God. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for taking us deeper tonight. I thank you, Lord, for, for causing, Lord, there to be light on our path because of your word, Father. I thank you, Father God, that you are raising up a mighty army uh, that worships you, Father, in spirit and truth. That takes the sword of the spirit, almighty God, and the full armor of God, and withstands all the things of the enemy. And we come forth victorious in Christ Jesus, for we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We thank you for victory. We thank you for the blood of the Lamb. And we thank you for your truth, Lord, that sets us free from the law of sin and death. Oh, death, where is your sting? You've been swallowed up in victory at the cross of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. Let us be a blessing to others, Lord. To tell them of the great works that you have accomplished by our Lord and Savior. And to be a light shining in the darkness of this world. Bringing people out of darkness into your marvelous light for you to bring the increase, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all for coming in tonight. God bless you. We appreciate you. We'll see you uh, Sunday morning, 1030, and Wednesday evening, um, 6 o'clock, which is 5 o'clock on the West Coast. And we're an hour, we're an hour ahead of you guys. And, of course, on Thursday nights, uh, 7 o'clock our time, 6 o'clock your time. God bless you.